Let's take a look at the DAS Studio 4 user interface and let me show you how to declutter it a little bit and set it up for the rest of the series. Welcome back. In this episode, I want to talk about viewport rendering options. So those are responsible for showing us pictures in the viewport while we're setting up our scene, while we're working with it. And there's various ways for DAS Studio to show us stuff, and they all have advantages and disadvantages, and it's a good thing to know about most of them so that you can pick the ones that we most work with. I'm not going to go through all of them, just so that we don't drag on, and many of them you might already know, but you know, some of them I'd like to introduce in more detail. I'm still in my Gothic library here. Let me go and park my viewport here so that we can see this best, this icon that I'm going to show you now. This is where we drop down what we'd like to see, like in my case, either the perspective view or the camera or the top back or left and right view. And right next to it here on the left hand side, we have a little icon that when we click that, we get this list of options here. And this will now switch over how the picture appears in the viewport. And let's go through a few here. Let's go through the very top here. If I say wire bounded box, then that shows me that. And this is kind of scary. It literally just shows the edges of what rendering engines know as the bounding box of an object. So imagine you had a sphere, then the bounding box of a sphere is something that is much easier and quicker to render than the sphere, which is a cube that, that in which the sphere just about fits in. You'll see a cube instead of the sphere. That's the bounding box around a sphere. And we do this because that is faster to render and calculate than all the facets of an object. So bounding box is always the fastest thing that can be calculated. And we're not even seeing the bounding box here, we're seeing literally just the edges. The next one here, the solid bounding box, that will show us all these boxes. Well, we don't really get to see all that much, but if I go and select my sphere here in the viewport, hit Control F, then I should see well, it's buried here with all the other stuff. There we go, that's my sphere. That's Well, that's the bounding box of my sphere. So it's the outer extents of my object, and it's very fast to calculate. If I go to the very outside of my library here, then this is what it looks like. So rather scary, but my viewport is extremely fast as I move it around. Back in the 90s, when the first 3D applications came around, these were the only preview options we had, apparently. I mean, I wasn't doing 3D then. I started in 2006. So, you know, we, we already had a better rendering engines that, that would be able to give us a fast preview result in real time then. But back in the day, computers were just not fast enough. So that's why these things are still available. The one that we mostly use is probably this one here, the texture shaded, as well as the filament, as well as the NVIDIA iRay. Let's, you know, skip all the others and head right into texture shaded. I'll let you explore these ones on your own. Texture shaded will make my library look like this. And if I go inside the library, I'll go back to my sphere, control F, then I'll go back into the very middle of it. And I can see that there are textures in here and the light is kind of flat, but I can't see the basic textures or the base texture maps. I don't see anything else. So if there was a bump map, then that's not going to be showing up. I think transparency will work. So I think I do see transparency in the windows here. In fact, let's try that if I use my sphere. And, you know, don't worry about it if you don't quite understand what I'm doing here. I'm just going to have a look under the geometry tab, under the cutout opacity. If I turn that value down on the surfaces tab, then I should see my sphere getting disappearing. So yes, the texture shaded viewport does do transparency. So this, the value when that is one, then my sphere is completely opaque. And when it's zero, then it's completely invisible. And anything in between there is like, you know, shades of that will make the object more or less visible. So if you ever need something shining through, then have a look at the surfaces tab of your object surface and fiddle with the cutout opacity. We're going to talk more about this, you know, when the time comes. So for now, uh, in the texture shaded viewport, we can see textures, base textures, that would be here on the base channel. This is what we can see, and colors, but we can't see things like bump maps and normal maps. So that is, texture shaded can't do that. It's also not great at letting us preview lighting. It's more designed so that we know which point we need to put figures and objects into that they make sense in the scene. And then when we're ready, we're going to go and preview this at a higher resolution, which is then with the NVIDIA iRay rendering engine. So if I switch over to that, that now takes much longer to calculate for my computer. And, you know, we get this gray preview and then eventually we see something like this. And it's a bit dark now, but, you know, this is 
basically what it would look like if I don't do anything with the lighting here. As I move my viewport, you can see that my picture doesn't exactly come out properly. I get some kind of grain here as I move. And then when I park my viewport here and let it render a little bit, then all the grain goes away and the picture looks a little bit better. So that means this render engine, iRay, that's the one we're going to be using for final renders, that needs much longer but it's also much more accurate and that's why we use it i can see accurate lights here from the little candles on the wall and i can see reflections here and i didn't really get to see that in my oops sorry <laughs> in my texture shaded view and the lighting is completely off and it's one of those things but those are the two viewport options that we had for a while in Das Studio. And thankfully, we've been recently given a third one, which is kind of in the middle there. It's called Filament. And I'm going to dedicate the next video fully to it because there's a bit of setup work that we need to do in order to work with it properly. I've already done it. I just wanted to show you what happens when I switch over the filament. Then this doesn't take all that long for my picture to show up. And I can see other things. Like if I do, if I go behind this wall here, I can see that there's riffles in the wall here. And those are in fact normal maps or bump maps rather. If I go and switch this over to my texture shaded view, this looks all rather flat. I mean, I can see a texture here, but I don't see geometric changes here like I do in filament and I would do an IRA. It's going to just be very dark behind here. So filament has the advantage that it is a PBR engine and that means it renders things based on physical principles. So Wikipedia has something to say about this. The physically based rendering is a computer graphics approach that seeks to render images in a way that models the flow of light in the real world. iRay is also PBR, for example. Many PBR pipelines aim to achieve photorealism like iRay does and, you know, to a certain extent, um, filament as well. Feasible and quick approximations of the bidirectional reflectance distribution function and rendering equation are of mathematical importance in this field. Yeah, we trust you on that. Photogrammetry may be used to help discover and encode accurate optical properties of materials, and shaders may be used to implement PBR principles. That's what we're going to learn about later too. But just for now, remember that physically based rendering uses real world principles to achieve a picture, whereas the other rendering engine, like the texture shaded view or the other one that's in Das Studio, which is the 3D light engine, those are called biased render engines, and they don't do what the real light does because it's too difficult to calculate for them. They use other principles and they often use shortcuts, hence the bias. They're not biased because they have a personality. They just like to employ principles that kind of fake things and they get the result done, but it's often more difficult to get there. So the beauty of PBR engines is that they're fairly easy to understand. So something like you had an object here and you had a light source here. And then when you shine light onto the object, depending on how high the light output Output is then there's going to be a shadow here and the engine understands that and can calculate that and depending on what properties are on the surface of an object it knows how to then deal with that so is a surface rough or is it shiny is it maybe a metal does it have to have reflectivity and all that so that's how a PBR engine works but these biased render engines like 3d light and uh, the texture shaded view they work a little bit differently so we're going to focus just on iRay and PBR engines and this is you know why I'm telling you this you, I'm not going read out the full article don't worry about it but I will give you a link to it so that you can have a look at it yourself why do we even have so many render engines well can't we just have one and be done with it it will can't we just make iray faster and sadly we can't I mean we have very expensive GPUs right now that can deal with iray up to a point but it's not it's far from real time it's not like you know the stuff that game engines employ they all employ some kind of trickery to get real-time images 60 or 120 or 240 times a second rendered but you know we don't have that in das studio we have iray that takes a while but it looks amazing if we know how to use it. And then there's these real-time preview engines that look kind of okay. We wouldn't want to use them for a final render, but they're great because as I move my viewport, I get immediate feedback of where what is. And it's good enough for us to get things done. The texture shaded viewport lets you get going right away with Das Studio, but I thought I'm going to tell you more about the filament viewport that I tend to use uh, through the course of this series. It is a little tricky to get going, but once we know how it works and why it works this way, it's actually a really good friend on your way to exploring 3D. Let's do this together in the next video.